so guys, my name is Alain Fox. Welcome to my channel. And today we have a very great worry on our hands. The lipstick might get on my teeth. Maybe it already is. I don't know. Hi so guys, my name is Alain Fox. Welcome to my channel. And today we have the trailer of Come on, come on, turn the radio on. Starring Joaquin Phoenix, the, the most amazing actor who recently won an Oscar. Like, that is just amazing. He's this, I, he, did he, I think he got the Oscar for the Joker. So it's the second person to get an Oscar for the Joker. And the fact that Jared already had an Oscar and he got to play the Joker. The Joker is so iconic. They all, they just cast the best of the best to play him. Just how it is. So this is going to be great. To visit planet Earth, you will have to be born as a human child. And first you will have to learn to use your new body. To move your arms and legs, you will learn to walk and run, to use your hands, to make sounds and form words. There will be so much for you to learn and so much for you to feel. Sadness, joy, disappointment, and wonder. You will grow up, travel, and work. Over the years, you will try to make sense of that happy, sad, full, always shifting life you are in. And when the time comes to return to your star, it may be hard to say goodbye to that strangely beautiful world. Damn this book. You're crying. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. You're definitely crying. See, you're crying. <laughs> <laughs> that is so beautiful. That is so beautiful and so pure. And it was in black and white. That is so, so, so beautiful. The whole thing about him just like teaching him. It's so odd. Like this entirely new person just comes around and slowly learns to be a human, I guess. It's so odd. It's so beautiful. I love children. So I have an actual bunch of little baby cousins from my uncles and my aunts. And it is so amazing how we see them develop and like start talking or walking. And it's so interesting because like we'll constantly be calling them. Has he started talking yet? Or has he started walking yet? And then, you know, we'll meet them and we're like, you, you, you began saying mama. And then they'll be calling everyone mama and it'll be so adorable. Um, I have a cousin. Um, I'm currently teaching him to say LNF and he's just like can't hold on to it for the life of him <laughs> it's so adorable it's just like it's, it's everything tiny anything miniature is just so cute so I, I did a little um search on what the movie is about and this is a movie about an uncle whom phoenix plays who goes to get his nephew and then they spend some quality time together and i'm assuming that time either comes to an end permanently like he dies or, you know, the kid has to move away or maybe he'd grow up. I don't know. I hope it's not too sad of a film. To visit planet Earth, you will have to be born as a human child. Don't let Mr. Phoenix fool you. You can either be born a human child or you can be an alien and just be sent to Earth. To Martha, Martha, Martha. And just grow up as a human baby. Possibilities are endless. You could be a bird and experience the Earth, like... That's, I think that's a better view from like all up there. Just really want to be a bird, man. Like you could just wander around. Your entire life's purpose is to find food, eat it, go to your nest, rest, and, you know, protect yourself and your eggs. But, you know, there's no worry about grades, results, future. It's just one day and another day. It's just beautiful. To use your hands. I'm assuming they're in the hospital and not because something happened to Mr. Phoenix or the baby, the nephew. We're, call, we're gonna call him Mr. Nephew. Um, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Little Nephew. I think they're just there because um, the girl whom I, I don't know who, who she is playing, she's pregnant. I think they're just going to welcome another baby. They're just so adorable. <laughs> 
they're gonna be so many babies and they're all gonna learn to walk and talk and it's just so amazing how when you're little for the tiniest of things that you're like automatically function to learn and do your parents are so proud of you but then you do learn to talk and then you start talking they're like please can you be silent why why did i learn to talk if you were going to make me go silent why is that disappointment i am absolutely sure the disappointment happened in school bullying bad grades there are so many things about a school that just scream depression because he's sitting in a bathroom stall i guess and then we see mr phoenix just you know leaning against the door like please open up and like giving him a slight like pep talk or just generally telling him that he's there for him or he's sorry for whatever happened so i don't know why are schools so toxic that's all i want to know what what is it about workplaces or schools that people just cannot work with each other for the life of them why do they make it so hard for others to just be there like you could be in school minding your own damn business not even smiling or looking at other people and yet you can become a target so odd how how does this mentality works like i just want to know what goes on in a bully's head that's all i want to know you will grow up travel and work I really hope that the nephew grows up and just moves out and like nothing happens to him or he's like they're torn apart that would be so sad like they they literally he seems like the sweetest uncle and if I had not read the back story I would have thought he was the father he's so lovely it's a very rare occasion when you come across a parent that lovely <laughs> and when the time comes to return to your star it may be hard to say goodbye to that strangely beautiful world. Damn this book. You're crying. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. Or maybe the time would never come. It's just in the book. Or maybe you know he's crying. I mean, most definitely he's crying because he thinks one day his nephew's going to, you know, have to go. I just think I really hope it's just in the book. It's so hard for just people to be torn from their children or just anyone they love. There's this dialogue in the Red Riding Hood book um that goes as nature should have a rule, parents should never outlive their children. It is the greatest pain. And sometimes I see, you know, um adoptive uh, adopted kids or just like people in general who find out that, you know, they were being raised by foster parents or um that you know the person who they thought was their parent was their uncle or something like that and they immediately start hating that person what did that person ever do to you except for giving you love that's all i want to know i mean i'm not you know trying to be a rude person because i don't know what it feels like to you know find out that you're adopted but as someone who just wants love man <laughs> why why do you hate that person who Like would you have rather grown up in a uh, adoption center? Well, that was it for this trailer. Um I'm really really happy with this and I hope you know really want to just want it to be a calm watch that I could just sit down and enjoy and not have to worry like oh my god, why did that happen? <laughs> Because it's like movies get you so attached to them that for like days on end you continuously feel like this hole inside of you like oh, he left Phoenix alone. <laughs> It's just so bad. <laughs> so, let me know your thoughts about this trailer in the comment section. Let me know um where was what was the first Hawaiian Phoenix film that you ever watched and I'm really sorry if I pronounced his name wrong. And yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure you give it a like. Also comment below let me know what what other videos you would like to see from me. Subscribe, click the notification bell so you're notified every time I upload and also check out my comedy channel as well as my Instagram at @anna_fox and I'll hopefully catch you in the next video. I'm the only Anna Fox in this world. And have, I, have, have has my brother ever told me that I have been adopted? Actually, I once told my mother that a friend of mine was born in the same hospital at the same time. And once she took us out for lunch and somebody mistook her for my mother's daughter and was like, "Okay." So my mother asked me, "What if you two were swapped in the hospital?" So um she was like, "Would you want to, you know, swap lives with her?" And I said, "As much as, you know, it sounds fun to do that, I don't think I want to leave you guys." <laughs> 
I mean, after all, you've been um, good enough parents and grandparents and said, I, I'm, I'm fine, I'm happy here. I don't think I would trade this for anywhere. Even if like, um, I'm offered to be, I don't know. Who do I admire really? Who do I admire? Like, mm, oh, there's the general that I really admire and I would like really appreciate he would train me. <laughs> but even with like him, I wouldn't trade this life. Like, come on. Or maybe I shouldn't be talking about this because I don't know what it feels like to be actually adopted. But my parents have never done a blood test on me or a DNA test. They've never done that. So I'm thinking, like, they always avoid that. I think I need to do it. <laughs> I need to find out if I'm their biological child or not. Um, but it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it's not like I'll move out if I find out I'm, I'm not independent enough. So, yeah, bye.